I'm here uh, at Metropolis uh, Coffee Shop with uh, George Flynn, and we're here to kick off our video series featuring all the composers we'll be playing on our June 11th concert at Gottlieb Hall. So here is George. Say hi, George. Hi. All right. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, how long you've been in Chicago, and, and uh, your life as a composer. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> Well, I was born and raised in the far west, Montana and Washington. Started taking piano lessons very young, at a very early age, around five or six. And um, around the age of maybe 14, 15, somewhere in there, I happened to stumble upon the first recording of Ives' Concert Sonata, played by John Kirkpatrick on an LP in the public library of all places. I took it home and instant conversion. Love at first hearing. And it changed a lot. I'm sure my parents weren't too happy about my banging away at the piano trying to find clusters, but um, in any case, uh, it, uh, it expanded my musical horizon significantly. And I had to get a copy of the score, and I had to get my own copy of the LP, and so forth. And so I guess it's been a love affair ever since. I eventually got to New York City, where I I went to school, I attended Columbia University and received all my degrees up through the doctorate at Columbia University. And while I was up there, I also had a chance to work downtown with people involved in the Fluxus movement and the avant-garde movement involving Ives, for one thing. I was involved in what are called Tone Modes concerts. Tone modes are pieces that I've wrote, and I was attracted to that. And there we introduced a lot of New York people to Missy Ann, and of course John Cage was a part of that scene down there at the time. Morton Feldman, Jim Tenney, Phil Corner, my own music, Malcolm Goldstein, Dick Higgins, Carol E. Schneeman as a, an artist, Alan Capo with the Happenings, all of that stuff was going on there. This was in the late 60s and early 70s, and uh, eventually I received a wonderful offer from Chicago to come and chair uh, one of the departments in the School of Music at DePaul, and that was in the late 70s. And that meant that I was going to be able to really design the entire graduate and undergraduate curriculum in my area of composition, theory, history, and so forth. So I took that position and I stayed at the ball until I retired around 2003. And now I just sit at home casually writing one masterpiece after another. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> now, CCL will be playing a piece of yours called Quietude. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, the well, genesis of that piece. In most of my music, I suppose the, the plurality of it, media is the piano, the piano solo. Uh, and with some chamber works that involved the piano. And I've written a few orchestral pieces, and Quietude was one that I thought it would be a contrast to a lot of my angry pieces, anti-war pieces, and so forth. And I wanted this to be something that would perhaps suggest some of the more pleasant, nice things about being alive and having good parents friends and so forth. So quietude, although there are moments of some stress in there, obviously there have to be some of that, it is meant to be primarily a piece that has a sense of rest about it and a sense of knowing where it's going and being content with it. It's supposed to, I guess, give a sense of contentment, ultimately. And so I wrote this in the 90s, originally, well, my parents and I have since, because of this concert coming up, made all the corrections and uh, any changes that I wanted to do. So what we're hearing really now at this point is going to be a revised version of the piece. Premier of a revised version. It's essentially the same piece, but there are a lot of problems that I have to take care of while I was writing it at the time. Sure. So, quiet to and it's dedicated to my parents. Excellent, excellent. You also mentioned you came up with a song for today. <laughs> you yes, explore well, that further. <laughs> Barack Obama caught Osama. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's George Flynn. I'm here with you. Now, nobody can steal that. No, that's copyrighted. <laughs> <laughs>
Excellent. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to uh, this webisode. Uh, keep in touch for the next one.